Where have you been? I thought I'd taken the late show at the Alhambra. Sarcasm doesn't <clears throat> become me, Bernard, especially at this time of the morning. <clears throat> it's a fair cop. Been to the loo. You've been restless all night. Sorry. Has Rachel told anyone she's pregnant yet? I don't know. And it's none of our business. It will be when Cathy finds out her husband's the father. Yeah, well, you don't know that. Of course I do. How's she going to cope with that? She's already taking up enough of your time with her troubles as it is. Yeah. She seems to be coping much better than she was. What's all this? Tape, family. Edited highlights. That's Chris at summer camp for the Boy Scouts. <laughs> Never struck me as a Boy Scout. Oh, he tried the lot. Boy Scouts, air cadets, music lessons. Every foreign trip the school ever went on. <laughs> You've done your best for both of them. No, not really. I paid for their pleasure, but... I should have spent more time creating it. Well, you've always been working yourself too hard at the business. Exactly. I should have spent more time with my kids. Doing things with them instead of paying other people to do it for me. I didn't even have time to put this lot in albums. Well, you're still here. And you've got more time now than you've ever had. But let the sun come up first, eh? Come on. Oh, smells good. Hey, these aren't shop bought. Yeah, uh, Fox will get blamed. Hey, mm. don't cook mine too, runny wench. You can cook your own for that. I can't. To get ready for work. Yeah, well, it's not my fault that I don't. I'm not your slave. Thought you wanted to borrow some money from me. Mm. One egg or two. <laughs> two, please. I hate this. I'm broke and I'm bored. Must be hard being bored at your age. Yeah, well, I am. There's plenty of jobs on a farm, even this time of year. I've already rejected Sarah, shall I? No, I don't want to be a part-time milkmaid. I want a proper job. I want my old job back. Hello? I hate that. What? Oh, people phoning up and then not saying anything. Oh. Who was it? Well, how could I possibly know if they didn't say anything? All right, I'm just asking. It's too early to be falling out. Is there uh, anything for me? No. Are you expecting something? No. Why do you ask that? Why are you so touchy, Jessica? Me? I get up first, I get the breakfast started, and then this is the thanks I get. Fine. I'll go and get dressed. It's one of those mornings where we should go back to bed, get up and start again. Oh, yes. What is wrong oh, with her? Up. I only guess she's upset about Biff. What's the matter with Jess? Just said good morning to her and she bit my head off. I shouldn't be too concerned. It could just be boyfriend trouble again. Ah, uh, no. If I could find a cure for that... I'd make a fortune. If you could sleep through the night, I'd be very grateful. Breakfast is ready. What are you doing cooking our breakfast? You're a guest. I wanted to earn my keep. There's no need. You know that. I wanted to. Now, come and get it while it's hot. Come on. Come on. She's better keeping busy. It'll take a mind off things. Yeah, I expect you're right. I thought our wedding would bring everyone together. One big, happy family. I'm getting more naive the older I get. Well, well let's hope Chris and Kathy can sort their own troubles out. So, do you think you love her or what? That's a cynical way of asking. I think it's a fair question. I mean, presumably you thought you loved Kathy at one point. So what's the score with Rachel, then? What's the score? You sound like somebody shouting across a bar. What about you and this Martin, then? Who's going to turn up next? Is Mum and Dad? Now, stop it. Ah, you don't like being questioned, but you think I'm fair game. I'm not married. You are. But your fancy man is. Fancy man? You sound like Betty Eggleton. Anyway, what are your intentions with Rachel? Oh, I don't know. I honestly don't. I'm hardly catch of the year now, am I? Are you passable? And you're not being too obnoxious? Well, thank you. Thank you very much. Oh, good morning. How are you? 
Morning, yes, I'm, uh, I'm fine. I I've decided that today's the day that I'm going to tell Chris. I was wondering if I could have a word. Uh, yes, what about? About Cathy. Come and sit down. So what about her? Well, I, I feel awful about it, but what's happened's happened, and that's that. I'm going to have Chris's baby. I'm just worried about how Cathy's going to take it. Well, I don't think she'll start knitting you booties, do you? <laughs> yeah, all right, I asked for that, but I, I am concerned about her. I'm in a bit of an impossible position here. I can't really talk about another patient, even though you are my receptionist. No, I don't expect you to break any code of confidentiality. I, I just want what's best for everyone. I weren't sure if you were open. Uh, we are just about. Go on, I'll sneak you in before my first appointment. Can I have Seth's records, please, Rachel? Thank you. Please, come and sit down. So, how are you? Bang in fettle. Well, you're well. Fit as a butchered pup. How are you, Doctor? <laughs> I'm fine, thank you. Thank you. Uh, so, what can I do for you? I want one of these flu jabs. Betty went there when she said it flies at face of nature. Oh, nonsense. But you left it a bit late. You should have been here a couple of months ago. I've not had it done before, but I think it might be a good idea. Because most people have had them already. I thought, that, nah, what you've got left might be a lot cheaper. You're a pensioner, aren't you, Seth? Aye. Food to buy, fuel to keep us warm. More important things than my health. That's why I waited till now. The jabs are free to pensioners, Seth. Free. Problems? With the bike or life in general? With the bike. Compared to my life at the moment, you haven't a care in the world. Well, are you getting back with Biff then, or not? Well, as we're completely incompatible, I very much doubt it. How do you feel about that then? I suppose I'll just have to learn to get on with it, won't I? That's the spirit, sis. Put them behind you and look to the future. You're just as bad as Mum and Dad, aren't you? Treating me like some sort of lovesick child who just have to pull herself together and get over it. No, you're wrong there, Jess. I regard you as a mature young woman who deserves to be taken seriously. After all, it wasn't long ago you were engaged to be married. Look, I might be seeing Biff later. Have you got any messages? Well, you must be joking. I've no time for anybody who'd put the pleasure of the hump set before the welfare of animals. Well, I'm glad there aren't any, because I don't particularly want to get involved in your tiff. Well, thank you very much for your support. And if ever I can do anything ever to help you, don't bother asking. But you'll just clean your pumps on a Tuesday morning. And I did. If you'd been here at seven o'clock this morning, you could have had a couple of free points. But as you weren't, you didn't. Why didn't you tell me you were making such an early start? Because I didn't know myself. I just woke up feeling rather good and decided that rather than just turn over again, I would turn over a new leaf. The wool pack is going back to its former efficiency. I'm going to be out of sorts all day now my routine's been upset. I'm sorry, Seth, but I have to put my business before your little perks. Now you've hit the nail on the head, Mr Turner. Any help I'll do for a pump wash is my perk for help I give you throughout the week. So to payment in lieu. No, rightly. I'm entitled to two or three pints under any circumstances. All right. I'll give you a half for your cheek. And a half? That wouldn't fill an all a tooth if I had one. Anyway, it's a bad advert for you. People see me supping an half, they'll think your beer's off. And it's not good for custom in long run. All right. But the yard needs clearing. And that's just for starters. I am sure is that. I bet you knew them flu jobs were free. Exactly. Out that's free is bound to have a catch, do it? No, I'll take a chance. And then it will be with you. And we're waiting outside that surgery till this place open. No, I've been talking to at Windsor's. Vic's let me have four packets of stuffing. I don't suppose you know, but it's going to be rationed this Christmas due to a shortage of Spanish onions. Something to do with common market, I think. Something to do with its sales strategy, more like. Aye, well, I'm very partial to a bit of stuffing. 
So, in return, I've offered our services to help to organise a proper commemorative event for the village. We've got other plans to see, do not forget. Yes, well, our party will still have priority, but it doesn't stop us getting involved. I'm very glad to hear that, Betty. You're just the woman to organise it. I think you're right. And I'm doing it despite the fact that the committee turned me down in favour of a cockney lass. Well, I'm glad you're not a bitter woman. <laughs> well, she don't know what she's missing if this is as good as it looks. Thank you, Seth. If you'd paid for that, we'd both be happy. I'll just have a coffee, Alan, and uh, you look very smart today, if you don't mind me being personal. <laughs> no, not at all. I've uh, decided this is how I'll be from here on in. Excuse me? Mr. Tumner? Yes, that's right. How may I help you? A private one, please. When you finish serving. Yes, yes, certainly. And, and you are? David Mackay. Oh. I'm the VAT inspector. No, you don't. Don't talk stupid. Yeah, well, you would too if you made you pack your job in. <laughs> you know what I mean. I like working with Zoe. He had no right to make me pack it in. He's just doing what he thinks best for you. Yeah, well, I've had enough of him. All right, what are you going to do about it, then? <clears throat> Leave home. Oh, I And go where? I'm not sure. Yeah. Leave perhaps and get a flat. Hey, that's a good idea. Let's see. You're 16, you've got no qualifications, no job, no money and no sense. Go on, go for it. Take off to a big city and dig gold in them there streets. I'm not daft. I'll sign on and get income support. And they'll fix me up with a flat until I can find a job. Oh, grow up, Linda. My dad might have been wrong, but you're just talking stupid. And you're just like him, thick. What? Born to shovel muck all your lies. I think that's why he stopped me working with Zoe, because he couldn't stand seeing me get on. And you're just the same. Oh, come on, you should be encouraging me to move to Leeds and improve myself, instead of putting me down. Yeah, I was putting who down here? Anyway, it might be a thick muck shoveling farm labourer. But it's you that's borrowing money off me, not the way around. <laughs> I'm going to go to Leeds. <laughs> well, Rachel should have gone by now. Perhaps we'd better go through to the surgery. Shall I bring this? Yes, and I can have my lunch. <laughs> You've been so good to me. I've had no one else to talk to. Look, Bernard, about last yeah, night. Yeah. Kathy, are you, you sure there's nobody you can turn to? Not really. Mum's nursing Gran in Scarborough. Lynn Whiteley's in Australia. The only other person I'd naturally confide in would be Rachel, yeah. Yeah. The first thing that you have to do is to decide what you actually want. Oh, wasn't expecting you home. Huh? School's on a free fall towards Christmas, so for a change I don't have to work lunch times. Have you eaten? Well. Right, I, uh, let's get going. All right. Um, thank you for your time. No problem. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye, Harry. -bye. Bye, I've heard of bringing work home, Bernard, but where is this going to end? The spare bedroom turned into a private ward? Patients lying across the tables while we're trying to eat our meals? Come on, Anna. Sarcasm doesn't suit you. Look, I think things are coming to a head. She's just about to make some pretty important decisions that should sort her out. Does she know about Rachel yet? No. And I cannot discuss it any more. Well, pardon me, Doctor. I know about patient confidentiality. But when the patient shows every indication of moving in with us, I think I have a right to know what's happening. Come on, Anna. Don't be ridiculous. Hey, how was school? Instead of telling you, perhaps I'll demonstrate by turning up with a class or two in the living room. That isn't looking too good, is it? Could, couldn't you just give me a week or two to sort out the accounts? I, I'm sure you'll find they're all in order. I'm sorry. Well, just a few days, then. You, you see, I've, I've suffered a bereavement recently, and I have got a bit behind hand, so, but I'm getting things together now. Look, Mr Turner, you'll be given a chance, all in good time, to put forward any mitigating circumstances, eh? 
But right now, I'm going to have to take away these books, these till rules and these receipts, OK? But you can't just come and take things away like that. I think you'll find I can. Well, well at least give me a chance to speak to my accountant. What's the point? Look, I'll leave you a receipt and we'll be in touch, eh? What's going to happen to me? Well, there'll probably be a full investigation which could possibly lead to a prosecution. According to Viv Windsor, there's going to be a royal visitor. Who's that? Well, I don't know. It hasn't been confirmed yet, but it's more likely to be one out at Boiler House than one off the bridge. Duchess of Kent, somebody like that. Is that the one they only let out to go to Wimbledon once a year? Yeah. Oh, she's a really nice person. Uh, Mr Tate, that royal who's always at Wimbledon, is that Duchess of Gloucester? <laughs> Sorry, sir, I haven't got a clue. Duchess of Kent. She's been a tireless supporter of the championship since the 60s. Pat, sir. Thank you very much. You're welcome. What a charming young man. Yes. He's a real diamond. Hello, uh, Eric. Oh, I, I've, um, I've just had a visit from the vat man. Yes. Well, he's taken all the books and everything. Y well, well, as soon as you can. You're looking the best I've seen you look for a long while. If you don't mind me saying so. I don't mind at all. I've realised that I have to go for what I want from now on. Well, good for you. Chris may be my son, but I think he's treated you very unfairly. And I'm delighted to see you back to your old self. I've been through recently. Nothing can put me down any further. Right, I'm on my way. Yes, come in. Hi. Oh, hi. Didn't expect you. Um, um, I'm sorry to disturb you. Oh, don't be daft. You don't have to apologise for coming here. I just had a block part of the door, that's all. It's been that sort of a day. Oh, I was hoping it was going to be a convenient time. For what? It doesn't matter. Anyway, now I'm here. Is there anything I can do? Well, yes, you can sit down and tell me the reason for the visit. Not that you need a reason to visit. It's always great to see you. Rachel, what's up? What's happened? Nothing's happened. Well, that's wrong there. Uh, something definitely has happened. Uh, but I don't know how to tell you or, or how you'll take it. But you're going to have to know. And it's better sooner rather than later. What the hell are you talking about? You're going to be a dad. I'm pregnant with your baby. <sighs> pregnant? That's absolutely brilliant news. <sighs> I don't know how you take it. Come here. <laughs> That's fantastic. When's the, when's the baby due? Sometime around the 30th of July. Well, that's brilliant. How are you feeling? Yeah, I feel fine. There's still a long way to go, though, you know. I know, I know. We've got a lot of planning to do. And we've got to face a lot of people. It, it's not going to be easy. <sighs> Nothing worthwhile is. Please, I, I don't want you worrying about a thing. Well, that's a bit difficult, isn't it, under the circumstances? We'll just have to face them all down. Together, we can do that. Does anybody know you? No. Well, yeah, the doctor knows, but he won't tell anyone. It's Cathy I'm really worried about. She might not be too surprised. Not after finding out about us. Our main priority now is it's got to be the baby. But we've still got to consider Cathy. I thought it might be best if uh, Bernard McAllister told her. What do you think? No, I think I should do it. What? Are you sure? Yeah. I mean, I think so. I'm definitely going to be the one to tell my dad. How do you think he'll take it? Oh, I don't know. In the end, he'll just be delighted to be, have a grandchild. But I don't want you worrying about anything. I'll sort things out and then... and then we can get married before the baby's born. <laughs> yeah. 
slow down. Come here. I'll look after you. And I'm going to be a great dad. Yeah, this baby, it'll lack for nothing, boy or girl. I mean, it's going to have the best. You, you sound just like your dad. Well, I can learn from his mistakes. But please, I don't want you worrying about anything. The two... The, the three of us, we, we can take on anything out there can throw at us. There you are, Frank. Thanks, Thanks. guys. Eric, well, thank you for coming so quickly. No problem. I'll have a whiskey, please, Kathy. What, what do you think I should do? Just tell the truth. Which is? The air crash? Losing Shirley? It all got too much for you and you let the business slip? Mitigating your circumstances and all that. They'll probably wrap your knuckles and make you pay a little fine, but I don't think you've got anything to worry about it. I do hope you're right. It's been a traumatic year for you, Alan, for all of us in one way or another. <laughs> Can you imagine if they were severe with you? Eh? There would be a public outcry. Widow a landlord, hero of the air crash, persecuted by that man. Eric's right. You'd only have to tell them what you've been through. Yeah, but even if the fine isn't astronomical, I shall... I should be hard put to it to pay it. Well, we'll worry about that as and when. No. Ah, fill these up. And don't forget Christmas and all its benefits are nearly upon us. What about you? Have you heard from your mum yet? Mm, she phoned last night. Gran's not so good, but she's a fighter, struggling on. It's the only way to be. And, uh, have you heeded my advice yet? No, Eric, but I'm going to... Hi. Hi, yeah. Oh, do you want the good news or the bad news? Oh, I hate it when people say that. Give me the good news. Well, you're not to tell a soul. Especially Dad. Go on. I'm going to be a father. Rachel's pregnant. That's the good news? Well, I think it's great news. You're going to have to keep it to yourself, though, until the time's right. My God, Chris. What's the bad news? Your fancy man's been ringing, trying to get in touch with you all day. He's at the Moreland Hotel and desperate to see you. I'm going to have to sort him out once and for all. And... Go on. I want Rachel to move in here with me. I don't know how you'll feel about sharing the cottage with her. The whole point is, by you moving out, you risk losing everything. House contents a lot. And it could be seen as you deserting your crippled husband. <laughs> Who happens to be having an affair. Ah, that could have happened after you'd left. I, I know it's not true, but time is a terrible way of twisting things. You have to move back home, and now, rather than later. Eric, you're right. I've got to do it. I'll move back as soon as I can. Good. 